transportation mobility. And uh, I'll be presenting uh, about sort of the, the background of, of this project and, and what it is and why it's being built. Um, and then uh, my colleague Arturo Ledesma uh, will talk a little bit about the construction. Um, and we'll, we also have um, Alex Contreras from Wellcon contracting or contractors uh, on hand here um, to answer any questions you may have about the construction process. So wh wh why are we building this project? Um, really, it's to improve safety for all users uh, of, of our streets. Um, bike, but bike boulevards, um, you know, that's the name that they're called, but they're about more than improving the route for bikes uh, and bicyclists. Um, this project will improve the safety for everyone who uses these streets by slowing and reducing cut through traffic and making it easier uh, for people walking and biking across busy streets. I don't know how to use this. Um, so a bicycle boulevard is a traffic calm neighborhood street where people of all ages and abilities feel comfortable biking and walking. Um, so while it's called a bicycle boulevard uh, and it's designed to provide a low stress alternative to biking on busy streets, um, the improvements will bring safety and livability benefits to all roadway users and people who live along the route. Um, so what is a bicycle boulevard? What does it consist of? Um, well, bicycle boulevards use a collection of relatively low cost features to calm traffic and make it easier for people to uh, biking and walking across busy streets. Um, so these elements include uh, speed humps, neighborhood traffic circles, uh, shared lane markings uh, and other pavement markings, uh, 20 mile an hour speed limit signs, um, push button crossings at major streets, um, and in some cases, uh, curb extensions or bump outs or chicanes, they have a lot of different names. Uh, and some of these features like traffic circles and, and curb extensions also provide opportunities to plant trees and, and other landscaping um, that can add shade and beautify the street and uh, potentially help to mitigate spot flooding. Um, so this project is, uh, is funded by Proposition 407, which is a bond package passed by Tucson voters in 2018 to improve city parks and bicycle and pedestrian connections to those parks, as well as schools, libraries, and more. Uh, and you can see here's, here's a map that shows um, Proposition 407 connections projects all throughout the city. Uh, you can see um, the third street project along this line, and then uh, the tree project along this line here. Um, so the blue lines on this map, those are bicycle safety and mobility projects, and the majority of those are bicycle boulevards, much like uh, the third and tree projects that we're here to talk about today. Uh, and these projects were also included in the City of Tucson's Bicycle Boulevard Master Plan, uh, which was adopted by the Mayor and City Council in, in 2017. So um, we did we did quite a bit of outreach on this project, although uh, most of it was, it was a little while ago, um, starting in uh, fall of 2019. Um, so we, we did a few rounds of, of, um, of meetings uh, and for each one we, we sent um, flyers or, or postcards to households within a quarter mile of the project, um, posted on next door, um, notified our board offices. So you know you may have seen things in, um, in uh, council members newsletters uh, and also contacted um, representatives of neighborhood associations uh, in the project areas. So in uh, fall of 2019, we did um, five meetings um, and we had uh, a survey which was online and, uh, and on paper um, to get input on the projects. We also had, um, you can see here, we've got the, we had these big maps showing the project areas where we encourage people to, to write their notes on them, um, to give us ideas, to, to alert us to um, concerns and other things along these projects. Um, so we also followed up and, and uh, did presentations and Q&As with um, neighborhoods along the corridors who responded to our, our, our offers um, to do that. Uh, in December 2019, we came back and we actually had plans um, to show and we did a few meetings then as well as another survey to, to show those plans and gather feedback on them. Uh, and then subsequently, um, we had some changes to the project uh, in 2020 and um, due to COVID, we did uh, some virtual meetings. Um, specifically on uh, the bike uh, bike lanes on University Boulevard between uh, Stone and Fourth Avenue, uh, as well as a few changes to um, the Treat Bike Boulevard. Uh, and then uh, in December of last year, we um, we did some evaluation and inter intercept surveys with um, people uh, about those bike lanes on University Boulevard that I mentioned. Um, so just some stats here. We had uh, 207 people who signed in at the in-person public meetings we held. Um, some of them are outside and, and kind of decentralized. So um, we think we may have had a few more people than that. Um, throughout all of the um, 
all of the efforts we did, all, all of the written or online surveys we did, we got 531 survey responses. Um, and then on the maps that we had laid out, we had over 250 uh, notes that people placed on those to, to help us with the design. Um, so there's two projects here. Um, there's the uh, Third Street or Third Street and University um, Bicycle Boulevard that goes from uh, Main Avenue all the way to Walmart Road. There's kind of a gap here um, around the university area. Um, and then there's the Treat Bicycle Boulevard, which goes uh, all the way from the Rito River all the way down to the um, Golf Links uh, Aviation uh, Multi-Use Path. So um, this is a total of approximately 12 miles uh, worth of, uh, of bikeways here. Um, and as part of the project, we, we've got uh, a bunch of um, a bunch of improvements and I'm going to walk through them. Try to walk through them quickly here. I don't know. Why that's oh, turn that off. Um, so. I'm just going to walk through these quickly. Um, but uh, I'll be dropping in the chat um, after I finish presenting and I turn it over to Arturo. Uh, I'll be putting the project website and a link to this map uh, in, in the chat. So uh, anybody who wants to, to go look at it and see, see what's coming to your area, um, please feel free to do so. So uh, I'll, um, I'll try to go fairly quickly here. Um, so starting on the West End at Main Avenue, um, the big thing happening there is uh, a new bike hawk crossing. So that's one of those push button crossings for people walking and biking to get across busier streets. Um, and then um, there's not there's not a whole lot here that you, that you can see um, all along the route. Uh, we're going to have things like wayfinding signage to help people stay on the route, especially where the route um, turns uh, and turns onto different streets in some areas. Um, as well as pavement markings, which uh, help to designate the um, the corridor as a uh, as a bicycle friendly street, uh, as well as to help with that wayfinding um, with arrows and things on pavement. Um, and then the other thing I just want to add is um, overall on the map, you'll see there are some areas that have have a lot of uh, new elements being added to them. Some areas um, not so much. Um, the there are a few reasons why um, there are some areas that don't have a lot of new improvements. Um, the big one is that in some areas, such as the Dunbar Spring area here um, uh, on, on the west side of this map, um, the, it already pretty much meets our goals for, for a, a bicycle boulevard as far as the traffic calming, as far as the existing conditions for traffic speeds and volumes. So in some areas, we didn't have to do a whole lot. Um, in some areas, we had to, to, to do more investment. But the, the goal really is to have a um, consistent uh, level of, uh, of of comfort uh, all along the entire corridor. Um, and then the other thing, um, I, I don't want to get too into the weeds here, but in, in some areas, um, there are significant drainage concerns that, that made it difficult for us to uh, include uh, traffic calming. So there are, there are some short sections where um, we were unfortunately not able to, to fit in um, some of the traffic calming that we would have liked to include. So after the bike hawk, um, the first major thing that I want to draw your attention to here is um, the buffered bike lanes on on University Boulevard. Um, some of you may be familiar with this already. We did a pilot um, where we actually trialed two different designs uh, between Stone and Fourth Avenue. Um, between Stone and Sixth Avenue, we did what's called a parking protected bike lane. And then between Sixth Avenue and Fourth Avenue, um, we did a buffered bike lane. And um, we we implemented that last summer, and then we conducted surveys and, and listened to feedback on that uh, in December. Um, we talked to 120 people about that, and um, that's on top of the people that we received surveys from that I mentioned before, um, and ultimately decided uh, for a variety of reasons to uh, take the design that we have from 6th Avenue to 4th Avenue and uh, replicate that between Stone and 6th Avenue. So um, if, if you've been in the area the last couple of days, you, you may be aware that there, there actually has been work on that already, um, obliterating the old striping, um, putting down um, what's called a fog seal. That's a pavement treatment to help protect the pavement. Uh, and cover over where, where the pavement markings were removed. Um, and then next week, uh, the new striping will go down. And so that'll look very similar to what we already have between 6th and 4th Avenue. Uh, so between 4th Avenue and uh, Park Avenue is not included in the project area. And um, that's in the area where the streetcar currently is. Um, the, there may be uh, room in the future to make improvements there. This was a project that was identified in uh, the Move Tucson plan. 
Um, but for now, uh, we were not able to add any improvements between 4th Avenue and Park Avenue because it was outside the scope of the project. Um, and then on the University of Arizona campus, um, we're really just putting in uh, wayfinding signs to help people follow the route uh, through campus. Uh, so continuing here, uh, east of Campbell uh, through Sam Hughes, there's already what's called um, traffic diversion in the form of either signage or actual physical um, barriers to prevent cars from turning on to uh, 3rd Street at Campbell, Tucson, and Country Club Road. So those streets already have um, low traffic speeds and, and uh, low traffic volumes overall. So um, there, we didn't see much of a need to, to add to that um, in order to uh, get to the level of bike friendliness um, that we're looking for on this project. And, and if you've been on those streets, you can see they're already very well used um, by people walking and biking. Um, so the next major improvement is a traffic circle here at the intersection of uh, the Third Street and Treat Avenue Bicycle Boulevard. So that'll be a landscape traffic circle like all of those along the corridor. Um, continuing uh, east here at, after Country Club, we're uh, adding a few speed humps. There are already um, some speed humps in existence as well as a traffic circle that's fairly new at Camino Miramonte. Um, in this area around Ritchie and Dodge, uh, this is one of the areas where uh, the stormwater concerns um, prevented us from, from really putting any traffic calming in there. Uh, and then east of Dodge, we have an existing speed hump, and then I believe there's at least one other speed hump in that area. Um, so at Alvernon, there's an existing crossing. Um, continuing here, there was another, there's an Alvernon wash runs through here. Um, and then we have uh, a series of speed humps through here to help calm traffic. Uh, at Columbus Boulevard, we have uh, we have a high visibility crossing. Um, we will be putting in a um, a buffered bike lane along Columbus to help uh, connect where the where the route dog legs here, um, and, as well as some uh, traffic islands to allow people who are um, who are using the route to actually cross one depending on on their comfort level. Um, so that that can make it easier to cross than having to wait for both directions of travel. Uh, and then continuing on, we have um, a variety of speed humps and traffic circles that uh, that mix with some existing traffic calming. Um, there's an existing crossing at Swan Road. And then we have some more uh, speed humps, traffic circles. Uh, at Rosemont, we have another high visibility crossing with um, bike waiting areas and green bike markings um, to help people get across that street. Uh, and then we have we continue on with some more speed humps uh, and some more traffic circles. We are installing a new um, a new bike hawk um, for bicycles and pedestrians to get across Craycroft. Uh, and then after the new um, speed humps and traffic circles are putting in between Craycroft and Wilmot, uh, we have another bike hawk that will uh, allow people to cross Wilmot. And then starting at the north end of Treat, um, in this area, and in, in a lot of this area on the north end, unfortunately, um, we had those flooding concerns. Um, so we had some things that we originally put in the plan that we ended up having to take out. Um, but we are including a new uh, a new bike hawk at Prince Road to make that crossing easier. Uh, and then there's an existing bike hawk at Fort Lowell. We've got uh, some new speed humps in here as well as a traffic circle. Uh, and then you may be familiar here, Glendon Treats. Um, that bike hawk actually uh, was just activated, I think, just a few weeks ago. So that is. Um, that is now in, but uh, we wanted to include it on here because not everybody may be aware of it just yet. Um, continuing south, we had some more flooding issues. We also have some existing um, chicanes in the area to help calm traffic. Uh, at Grant Road, we will be uh, upgrading the bike hawk there uh, to, to make it a bike hawk to make it easier for people um, on their bikes to get across Grant. Uh, and then uh, between Grant and Elm, um, we have a series of uh, chicanes to help slow down traffic. Um, we did have some flooding concerns that were not as severe as in other areas, and we were unable to do um, as many speed humps or traffic circles as we would have liked, but we were able to do these um, chicanes. So these will be landscaped with trees, and, th and those will um, those those will kind of stick out in, into the roadway and, and slow traffic down. Um, and then continuing south, we have kind of alternating um, traffic circles and speed humps for traffic calming. Uh, on the west side of Treat between Speedway and Helen, uh, we're actually putting in a new sidewalk um, to help connect to the existing hawk there that we're upgrading to a bike hawk. Uh, 
And then continuing south, uh, we've got some more traffic circles and speed humps. Actually, at 2nd Street, um, this is a speed table that is also a, a raised crosswalk that connects to the, the sidewalk on either side of the street. So um, in addition to providing traffic calming, that should um, make it easier for people to um, to walk to and from the park as well and, and make that a more visible and, and a better crossing there. Uh, and then we're back to the uh, traffic circle where the routes intersect. We have some more um, traffic calming in the form of speed humps and traffic circles. We have another short section of new sidewalk from 5th Street to 6th Street uh, to connect to the new bike hawk uh, at 6th and Treat. And then between um, 6th and Broadway, we have uh, we have a, a series of existing speed humps. So um, the only thing we're adding there in, the, in terms of traffic calming is a traffic circle at 8th Street. Uh, at Broadway, uh, there is a, a bike hawk that uh, will be turned on soon uh, at Broadway and Treat. Um, some of you may remember that there was a bike hawk there before, before the, uh, the Broadway uh, Boulevard project uh, started. So that is going to be uh, brought back and, and turned on soon. Uh, and then through the uh, Broadmoor neighborhood between um, Broadway and Winset here, we have a series of, of new speed humps. Um, go around Stratford Drive, come around through here. Um, and then along Treat, uh, south of there, going up 22nd Street, there is already quite a bit of traffic calming as part of a Safe Routes to uh, Schools project a few years ago. So um, we are adding a new traffic circle at Eastland. Um, we're actually going to be adding landscaping to the traffic circles at 19th and 21st. They're not shown here on the map, um, but those were put in uh, a few years ago as part of that Safe Routes to School project and they weren't landscaped. Uh, and one of the things we, we heard as a request uh, on this project was um, to do landscaping. And, and so um, in order to provide consistency, in order to bring you know, some more beautification to the area, um, we're, we're landscaping those traffic circles. And then at 22nd Street, we are upgrading the Hawk there to a bike Hawk, um, adding a couple more traffic or speed humps uh, in addition to um, a few that are already in the area. And then at the corner of um, Winchester Vista and Bristol, there is a, a new landscape traffic circle going in as well. So that's kind of the overview of, of the major improvements that are going in along these, um, these project corridors. So um, I will, as soon as I'm finished with my little spiel here, uh, I will drop the, the link to that in the chat so you all can check it out on uh, yourselves. And then, um, for more information, uh, I'll drop this in the in the chat as well. The the project website, so um, you can you can learn more about the improvements that are coming, more about Prop 407 uh, and that sort of thing. Uh, and now I'm going to turn it over to um, Arturo Ledesma to talk about the the construction on this project. Uh, good evening, everyone, and thank you, Ryan. Um, so now, now to the uh, exciting part: our construction kickoff. Uh, which is currently uh, as anticipated to start here later in May, the week of May 23rd, to be more specific. Uh, we anticipate an overall construction duration of approximately six months, uh, with TREAT being the first project that will be starting. Um, and then uh, third, will, third Street will uh, drag a little bit later and start uh, uh, currently anticipated for uh, July. Uh, so TREAT uh, is approximately a, a six mile corridor, a little bit over six miles, and third is approximately seven. The two of them at different times will be uh, under construction concurrently, but altogether the anticipated construction timeline again will be six months. So with that, uh, we will go ahead and open it up for questions. Um, feel free to uh, type it in the chat or if you feel more comfortable. Uh, go ahead and unmute yourself to ask the question and Ryan, myself or Alex, who's also on the call with us, will be happy to try to assist you. And I'll just throw in that if, if there's anybody who's joining us by phone, you can, um, if you're muted, you can press star six to unmute yourself or star six to remute mute yourself if you um, want, if you're not muted. Um, I guess I, I'll go. My, I, I'm Bill. I'm over in uh, the Blenman area, and um, I use the Treat Boulevard to uh, Rieto quite often, and it's it's nice. Um, one thing I've noticed though is uh, um, Linden Boulevard from Tucson to Treat um, kind of goes right past my house. Uh, 
there's a lot of speeding. And um, so I'm hoping that uh, it's probably too late for anything like that, but uh, it has nothing really to do with the bike lanes, but how, uh, how would that be a possible uh, incorporation of having like a, a traffic circle there or, um, um, you know, it has to be a neighborhood input or how, how does that work? Is that something you can talk about now? I can answer that one uh, unless someone else wants to jump in. Um, so at the intersection of Linden and Shreet, um, we were unable to put in a traffic circle at that location due to um, stormwater issues. The the way that the water flows in that area is pretty weird. And honestly, I don't fully understand it, but we did have um, some drainage analysis done to show that we were able to include um, the traffic circle at Waverly and a speed hump just south of Linden. Um, as far as adding additional traffic coming, um, that's something we have a program called Neighborhood Traffic Management Program uh, that allows uh, neighborhoods and residents to, um, to request uh, traffic calming improvements in, in their area. Um, there, there's sort of a petition process. You need to get um, people in the area around this proposed uh, treatment to, um, to sign off on it, essentially. And then um, the funding, uh, we, we don't currently have a dedicated funding source for that sort of thing, um, but things like speed humps, um, you can actually um ask your uh council ward office there is a program um for it's not very many but there are um each council office has a few um reduced cost speed humps uh that they um can award essentially every year so um if if they're if you'd be interested in adding speed humps along linden that that's something that i would encourage you to um talk to your neighborhood association about um talk, talk to your neighbors and um, reach out to um to the ward six office and um, ask them uh, how they might be able to help you with that. Very cool. And and just to tag on top of that a little bit. So at Forges and Linden, uh, there is um, a north south stop sign there. And I've just been noticing, you know, since COVID times, I'm home more, uh, that there's just a lot of stop sign running. Like folks don't even bother. <laughs> they just breeze on through and they're doing like full speed. And uh, that's why I'm wondering if like maybe a circle right there. And is that is that typically tying to like say the emergency services where they have to have so much room to get trucks and the fire trucks through? Yeah, so all of our traffic calming is is, is designed so that it, it you know doesn't slow down emergency services too much. Um, you know, really the goal with our traffic calming is is to um, get people to to go this, you know the speed limit essentially, which will be 20 miles per hour along this corridor. Um, along Forges, of course, it's it's still going to be 25 um, miles per hour as well as on Linden. Um, yeah, so you know, it, 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 a traffic circle at that location is also possible through the neighborhood traffic management program. So that's something um, you could also explore as well. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Of course. Good. This is Marilyn Robinson. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. OK, um, you had said that a sidewalk would be installed on the west side of Treat between Helen and Speedway to connect with the Hawk at, at Speedway. Um, previously, I had asked about this um, because there are a number of wonderful shade trees along the west side of Treat between uh, Speedway and Helen. They, I was told that the sidewalk would be put on the east side of Treat, which doesn't connect so nicely with the crosswalk, of course. So I'm just curious what um, what the decision is and if it will be on the west side, what will you do to maintain the wonderful shade trees there? That's a great question. And, and um, yeah, I probably shouldn't have, have glided past that so much. So um, I, I am very familiar with those, those trees. I actually live in, in the, the neighborhood and, I, and those are some great ironwood and, and Palo Verde trees along there. Um, so we actually designed the sidewalk um, to go around those. So I, I don't believe we are taking out any trees um, for that. I think there are some smaller plants that, that may um, need to go. So the, um, the homeowner there will, will be notified um, when, when that determination is made. But the intention was really to provide uh, a connection um, to to the bike hawk there where they're currently uh, it is not a sidewalk and it's you know it's kind of angled and rocky there so um, that was the reason for putting the sidewalk there and uh, we we are designing it to go around the trees and one in one case kind of going around uh, I think it's an ironwood tree close to Helen oh that's good news I'm glad to hear it however 
Um, there is there is a lot of car parking in that uh, area because of the um, oh the restaurants, the uh, sandwich shops there at the at Speedway. So uh, the um, the bikes are going to have a tough time, I think, getting around the with the cars all parked there. But the um, the sidewalk will be much welcome. Thank you for that. Thanks. And and um, I, I I didn't I didn't get into the details of it, but um, at a bike hawk, which the current crossing at Speedway and Treat is going to be upgraded to, um, there is uh, a sort of separate area for for bikes to pull into um, to to push the button and, and wait to cross uh, that um, cars won't be able to park in. So um, hopefully that shouldn't be an issue. And and if there are cars that are pulling all the way up to where bikes enter there, that that's something we can look at uh, enforcement enforcing. Great. Thank you. This is Stephen Brigham from Rito Bend. Uh, hi, Ryan. Hi, Stephen. Has the design for the hawk at Prince and Cactus changed at all from what you last uh, presented to us, particularly in light of the uh, Rito Bend Gateway mural? And also, we were trying to get a little bit of grading consideration for that northeast corner. Any update on that? Um, so I'm, I believe the, the last time we spoke, um, it, it, it will be a conventional hawk. We had explored the possibility of doing um, something that, that we're, we're, we're calling a baby hawk, which we haven't done anything like that in Tucson yet. Um, that would have been kind of a smaller scale. It wouldn't have had the big mast arms that stick out over the road. Um, ultimately, uh, our traffic engineering uh, team was not comfortable with that design on, on a road with the um, traffic volumes and speeds and width of, of Prince Road. So um, it is going to be a conventional hawk. Um, it will be a bit smaller in scale than than most, given that Prince is, you know, it's not a huge street like like Speedway, for example. Um, and then as far as uh, as far as you know, changing the grade or or, or you know other improvements of, of that nature um, to access the mural, if if, that, if I'm remembering correctly, um, that uh, unfortunately was determined to be uh, outside the scope of, of this project. So unfortunately, we're not able to um, contribute to that as part of this project. I, that's what I thought. I also, as I recall, you did change the design of the uh, traffic uh, control cabinet so they weren't directly in front of the mural. So I, I'm assuming that change has been made. Um, uh, yes, I, I believe the cabinets are on the south side. Uh, of the street and, and shouldn't be blocking the mural. And one last question. It's been a while since I looked at the drawings, but are the posted drawings on the website uh, the current drawings? Uh, yes. So the the final um, the final plans for the project are are on the website. So so there is um, there's a link to uh, that interactive map that I was showing, and then right below that are are the construction drawings. If you wanna if you wanna peruse those. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Steve, Steve, before you uh, jump off, uh, we did yeah. we do see your question in the chat, and so I did want to just be able to answer that. You asked about what end uh, of treat uh, we are starting on. No. And are are you referring to construction? Yes. yes. Okay, for construction, we will be starting at the south end and working our way north. That's the current anticipated construction phasing. And I'll add that along 3rd Street, we are planning on starting at the west end and working our way east. So I appreciate that. So that we can update our neighborhoods, um, do you have an approximate date for when you'll be at Prince and um, Cactus Street? You know, I'll, I'll defer to Alex. Alex, are you available to answer answer that question? I know we have a preliminary schedule, but I don't have that in front of me. Do you have a rough time frame when uh, we would be at doing construction in the area that uh, Mr. Brigham is uh, asking about? The first part of October, we'll be starting at the intersection of Treat and Prince. Thank you. With an estimated duration in that location of 31 days, but the actual construction portion should only take about 15. Then after that, it'll be landscaping and stuff like that. And of course, you know, we want to stay away from the Winter Haven um, events around uh, Halloween, and of course, Christmas. It's pretty busy in there. 
Hmm. Yeah, that's a great point to bring up uh, with our anticipated time schedule. And, and, and of course, keep in mind, it is construction. We know that things do change a bit and, and that doesn't always mean we hit our anticipated uh, scheduled uh, time frames. But uh, right now we would be finishing construction um, before the whole uh, winter uh, festival would be kicking off in Winter Haven. So we're crossing our fingers. We can keep ourselves in line with that completion date. I've taken more than my time I, that I deserve, but keep in mind that Halloween is a big event for them as well. And so if anything you can post on your website or send out, that would be greatly appreciated. No, thank you for I'm mentioning close. that. That's greatly appreciated. Hi, my name is Jeff. Um, I used to be active on the BAC committee and the Neighborhood Association at Rideau Bend. Um, I just had a question about the stretch, not of Prince, but on Allen, that stretch is pretty bad paving wise from, from uh, I guess from Country Club to Tucson Boulevard. And that's that's a major connecting point for people getting onto the bike trail. And I just wondering if the city's planning on doing anything about that. I uh, I can I can field that one. So um I am I'm not aware of, of, of any current funding um, to make pavement improvement in that area. Um, however, uh, on Tuesday, there is a special election um, for the extension of the half cent sales tax that we currently have um, that currently funds uh, public safety improvements uh, and road improvements. Uh, and so if, if that were to be extended, um, the goal is uh, over the 10 year life of that extension uh, to improve every neighborhood street um, that's owned and maintained by the city of Tucson, um, which I believe Allen Road uh, falls under that category. So um, if that passes, then within the next 10 years, I, I would expect um, that, that Allen Road will be improved. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, uh, this is uh, Bill again. I, I had a question about, uh, I posted in chat, is there any um, thought about having some signage through the, um, on the path up to the Rieto north of Prince? It's kind of confusing, like going through the, what what route you actually take through the neighborhoods and, and what turns you have to make to get through the neighborhoods to get up to Rieto uh, once you pass Prince Road going north. I know that's... that's this area up there in in, in Winter Haven and and uh, you know they're they may object to having some signage like that, but I'm just curious if there's any thought about that. That's a great question, and I I kind of skimmed over that, but uh, all along um, both Third and Street, um, there will be signs at, at, after each major street crossing um, that will identify the route as well. Whenever the route turns. Um, there will be signage showing um, which way to go to um, to stay on the route, um, but it, as well as um, pavement markings that that'll um, go along with it as well. So uh, it and should be much simpler to follow the route uh, once this. Is Thank you so much. And to add, uh, just so for those who have put posted a, a question in the chat. Uh, we will get to those in a minute. I know there's a, a few hands we have up, so we're just addressing those questions first. Um, but as soon as those questions get answered, we will go ahead and, and, and take the questions that we have in the chat. So I apologize, Bill. Uh, we just hadn't gotten to your question just yet. Um, so I, I, Madeline, I saw um, I saw you were, were trying to speak there. It looks like you're muted. Um, so if you can unmute yourself, then hopefully we can hear you. OK, I'm still I'm unfortunately I'm still not on. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, great. OK, I had a speaker in. Uh, is this a good time or were you trying to answer the rest of the questions in the chat? No, we'll 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 we'll, uh, we'll go through. Yeah, we'll, we'll go through, you know, the, and these questions and then we'll do the chat. Again. OK, so I can go ahead. Mm -hmm. I'm having trouble hearing. I, I took that speaker out. Yeah. Um, I'm with the Sam Hughes Neighborhood Association Mobility and Transportation Committee. Mm -hmm. I'm a neighbor on um, on first between Treat and and Country Club, and um, we're concerned. We have, of course, the intersection of both bike boulevards, and um, 
right in the middle of Sam Hughes. So we are the the committee is uh, headed by uh, Karima Sla Karima Slayman, who unfortunately couldn't be here, and we're particularly concerned about um, signage uh, for approaching traffic to the um, to the bike boulevards, uh, warning people that uh, they're coming upon a heavily trafficked you know bike boulevards, especially at that intersection. And also we've we've been getting requests from neighbors for speed humps and uh, both independent of our committee and people just approaching Ward 6 as I heard you speak about the program through Ward 6. So just to uh, alert you to that, but we are we are interested in in uh, seeing uh, signage related to the the bike boulevard, uh, giving people a heads up as they approach approach that area. OK, thank you. Thanks. Thanks for that question. Um, so as far as uh, you know, uh, people driving on the bike boulevard, um, there will be pavement markings. There will be signage to indicate that um, presence of bicyclists um, uh, hopefully should, should be a cue for most people. Um, as far as for the streets that are that are approaching it, cross streets, um, most of those will have stop signs. In some cases, we're actually going to be changing the traffic control so um, that the intersection um, will allow uh, users on the bike boulevard to continue um, without stopping. Um, at some locations, like I believe First and Treat is actually not changing. That will continue to be a four way stop. Um, but um, the, the idea is essentially that you know car, cars will have to come to a stop. They, they'll take stock of the situation before they turn on onto the street. And when they do turn onto the street, um, hopefully the you know the signage and everything should should make it clear the type of street that it is and and. Will there be bike boulevard specific signage? Uh, like I've seen it at other uh, other um, places in Tucson that that alert people that there is a bike boulevard coming up. Um, so there is so uh, on the route, yes, um, as well as uh, on top of st the neighborhood street signs, there will be a, a small sign that that says bike boulevard that'll that'll be blue that that help hopefully should should help create some visibility as well. OK. All right, thank you. Thanks. Uh, do we have any any other questions? I, I know that we still have a few hands up, so um, sure, I'll, feel I'll free go. I was to... waiting for the okay. line, but if Anyway, um, I was just, oh, sorry, Jason Catter Henry, Peter Howell Neighborhood Association, um, user of the bike path. Um, I was wondering um, what the traffic control signalization is going to be at the traffic circles. Is it going to be yields for the cyclists all the way through or are it going to be four way stops? And I wanted to specifically call out the uh, traffic circle slash four way stop that exists now at Third and Treat where cops love to hang out and ticket students riding bikes. And you can get a really nice head of steam going downhill, and then you have to like screech to a stop. So if that could not be a stop, that would be amazing. I, I appreciate that comment. Um, so uh, a lot at, at most intersections, whether it's a traffic circle or not along um, these streets, uh, it, it should be a stop sign for the cross streets uh, that intersect the bike boulevard uh, and no stop sign um, for the bike boulevard users. Um, at some locations, uh, like first and treat, um, we're keeping that four-way stop control. Um, at third and treat, we will actually be um, removing the stop signs for users of third street. Um, but uh, our traffic engineers have have determined, and and there have been um, roadway safety assessments done on the Fourth Avenue and Fontana Bicycle Boulevard, um, which previously had four-way yields um, that have been converted to two-way stops. That um, showed that that the two-way stops uh, condition was actually a, a safer um, situation. So. I appreciate not wanting have to have to come to a stop. Um, unfortunately, if you're on treat and uh, when you come to third, um, there will still be a stop sign there, but at least along third street, um, that stop sign uh, will be coming out and, and that traffic circle uh, will help slow, slow down cars that are passing through that intersection. I'm a, I'm a third direction, so this suits my needs perfectly. Thank you so much. All right. Anybody else have any uh, any questions that they want to ask, or we should we move on to the chat? All right, I'll move on. Uh, to the sounds. I was gonna say, sounds like uh, the chat might be the way to go now, Ryan. Okay. Um, let's see. I see Daniel Sylvester had a question. 
Are the chicanes on street south of Grant similar to those north of Grant? The ones north create almost a protected bike lane with the water retention basin happening between vehicular and bike lane traffic. Uh, I have the drawings that are publicly, but not sure if they've changed. Um, that's a great question. So um, they will be similar in that they will be um, set away from the curb, I think four feet away, which I believe is the same as um, what you have uh, north of Grant. Um, the so in, in that sense they'll be similar um the difference is that because uh of of the shape of the roadway and the way that the water flows um south of grant uh the road is what's called crown so it's actually higher in the middle and lower on the sides um so we're actually able to do the chicanes on both sides of the street and get water to those plantings um north of grant the road becomes what's called inverted crown uh and uh it's a little bit offset so um, those chicanes on, on the west side of the street, uh, north of Grant, th those do get water. Um, we wouldn't have been able to do something like that on the east side of the street, north of Grant. So um, that, as far as the general shape and everything and then the separation from the curb, they will be the same, um, but they will be alternating sides of the street to help. You can only do the audio by phone. <coughs> People are asking. Um, Sorry, Jeff. Um, let's see. Um, and then Lori had a question. Can you re-explain the crossings at Columbus and Romont, Rosemont? You mentioned pavement markings, I think, but no plans for bike hawk installation. Is that right? Uh, so let me see if I can actually bring up plans just to show what it is that we're planning on building. So um, the first part or the second part of your question, um, we are not planning to uh, to add uh, bike hawks at those locations. Um, you know, those, those are major streets. Those are what are called collector streets, which are one step below arterial streets, but, you know, major streets like like Grant and Speedway. Um, so they carry more traffic than a neighborhood street, but not as much as as the, as the more major streets. So um, a, a bike hawk, uh, unfortunately, was was not something that we were able to include at those locations. And let me see if I can find. OK, so hopefully. Hopefully this 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 will be clear and I'll try to explain what's going on here. Um, so here's a Columbus uh, and north is to the right here. So here's Columbus going east west. You can see my cursor. Um, so what we're actually doing is rec is uh, if you're heading um, if you're heading east uh, on this on the Third Street Bike Boulevard when you reach Columbus, there will actually be um, a, an area here very similar to what you would find at a bike hawk um, at a more major street um, that'll. Uh, be separated from from car traffic there, so you can pull into that, uh, and then you can you can wait for um, the southbound traffic on Columbus to pass, uh, and then when when that's clear, um, you can actually uh, go halfway across and wait in this little island that we're going to be building, um, and then when traffic is clear in the northbound direction, uh, then you can proceed on to Columbus, where we are going to be um, improving the bike lane there, making a buffered bike lane where it's currently just a, a standard. Um, I think it's either a five or six foot bike lane. So, um, and then it should, it'll be pretty simple to, to turn on to, to Third Street uh, going east. And then it's the same situation in, in the other direction. So you'll pull into this, this bike waiting area uh, and you can cross in two stages um, using this, uh, this island here. Um, so that's the crossing at Columbus and Columbus is a little unusual because it's because it's offset like that. Um, and then at, uh, at Rosemont, uh, here's Rosemont and North, north South here. Um, so there'll be something, it's a little bit similar. Um, it'll have those waiting areas um, that, that take you uh, out of the path of, of traffic when you're waiting to cross. Um, at, at this location, there'll be the, those um, green ladder markings, um, which I don't think I mentioned those, but I believe that those, actually, I'm not sure that those are being installed on Columbus, um, but this will enhance the visibility of the crossing um, and uh, um, provide provide an easier crossing than, than you currently have today, where we're currently, you know, you, you, you pull over to wait and, you know, cars may come up behind you. Um, and, you know, if you're going straight and they're trying to turn right, it's it's not um, it's not a, not a great experience. So this this should improve that. Um, and then one thing I, I neglected to mention is that on, on Columbus as well, um, because we are trying to create a, 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 you know, a better bike connection between the two uh, legs of the bike boulevard, um, that connect to Columbus. Um, we are adding speed tables along Columbus as well. So um, that should uh, that should slow down uh, car drivers a little bit and uh, help sort of create um, the awareness that there is 
Um, this is a, you know a, a different situation than than you know a normal uh, major street like Columbus. Um, and these are speed tables, not speed humps or speed bumps. So um, you know the, the the target speed is is somewhere around like 25, 30 miles an hour. So it's it's roughly what the speed limit uh, already is along Columbus. So the goal is really to reduce excessive speeding and and to create that visibility. That answers your question. Um, let's see, looks like Mike Hendricks. Uh, hello, first, thanks for these projects. Uh, second, will the circle at third and treat? Okay, it looks like we kind of already covered that. So hoping for yield signs if possible at third and treat. Um, so yeah, as I, as I mentioned, um, we will be doing two-way stop control uh, at most of the traffic circles that we're installing. Um, the four-way yield that we had along the Fourth Fontana Bike Boulevard um, did not perform as well as as, as we had hoped, and and so um, we're returning. We returned those to two-way stop control, and that that's our our current uh, way of of doing things at traffic circles. And then your other question: uh, Are the big lead times like signal poles and signal equipment already ordered? Uh, yes, in fact, we ordered those quite quite a while ago. So um, we have had those uh, on hand for some time. So. Um, signal poles, I believe also the signal equipment, Arturo uh, or, or Alex, you, you can correct me, but I believe I believe all of that is is on hand or or should be um, delivered to keep the project on schedule. Yeah, and we even uh, with that in mind, we've also uh, kind of worked our construction around uh, making sure we have the equipment in hand. So uh, there was a little bit of delay between uh, when we finalized construction documents and when we're actually starting construction. And that was to accommodate uh, main, making sure we obtained all the necessary equipment. But li like Ryan had pointed out, uh, although there is significant lead times on, on signal equipment, we were able to uh, account for that and order the pole equipment earlier than than the project was completed so that we didn't delay it further once we started in construction. Thanks, Arturo. Um, I have a question from Lori. Uh, said one of the new bike route signs at Rosewood and Magnolia is incorrect. Is there someone we should notify about that? Um, yeah, so I, I'm not sure how it's incorrect, but um, that's something that you could submit to um, TDOT concerns. Uh, I don't know if uh, Amanda or someone else can drop that information in the chat, but we have um, a phone number, uh, a website, a um, email address, and uh, I believe also an app that that you can um, you can report um, all kinds of things, potholes, branches that have fallen in the street, but also things like incorrect signage, uh, and that creates a ticket in our system that. Um, Will be assigned to uh, you know street maintenance or or whoever is the most appropriate uh, to deal with it. So, um, yeah, hopefully we can get that dropped in the chat. And then um, I just realized I, I I said I was going to put the project website and the interactive project map in the chat, and I had them ready to go. So I'm just going to drop them in right below. Thank you, Amanda, for putting that in the chat. And then I'm going to put the project website and the map uh, in there as well. Uh, Elizabeth Farkas. Um, uh, said I may missed your answer about what end of treat you're starting on. Um, so we are starting on the south end of, of treat and working our way north along along there. Uh, and that work is the first part of the project, so starting uh, in May. Uh, Leslie Katz asked, does vegetation in chicanes typically in sh include shade trees? Um, yes, Leslie, I believe that all of the chicanes that we are putting in along treat um, will have trees in them. Uh, I can double check that, but I'm, I'm fairly certain that that all of those will have um, some trees in them. And that, that's one nice thing about about the chicanes. Um, some of the a, a lot of the traffic circles, unfortunately, um, we were not able to include trees because uh, for a variety of reasons, but the major one being the sewer lines um, directly underneath um, the center of the street. So um, the chicanes being offset to the side of the street, we were able to include trees in those locations. Uh, and then Eric says, Ryan, if I understand the map correctly, there will not be any changes from Elm to Speedway on Treat. Is this correct? I have noticed with better pavement, Treat has seen increased speed. Um, so there should be, let me see if I can pull that map up again. Um, between Speedway and Elm, is that the, is that what that was? Yes. Uh, no, there are quite a few uh, improvements uh, between Speedway and Elm. So there will be traffic circles at uh, Lee Street. 
uh, Drachman Street and Helen, uh, as well as uh, speed humps um, just south of Adams Street and Mabel Street. Um, let's see. I think that I think we're out of questions. Any other anybody else have any other questions uh, about this project before we call it a night? It's very exciting. Thank you so much for all the hard work you guys are doing to what a, what a nightmare to try and plan all this out and schedule it and appreciate your work. Um, I wouldn't call it a nightmare. Uh, it's it's certainly taken a bit longer than than, than we had hoped, um, but we're really excited uh, to to get it going. And uh, yeah, thanks thanks for the kind words, uh, Lori and Alice and 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 Daniel. Um, I see a question from from Daniel. Um, is the schedule going to be posted? That's something Ar Arturo or Alex, could you can speak to that. Yeah, we typically don't post construction schedules due to uh, the varying nature that occurs when projects are in construction. So um, we obviously things are relatively tentative in construction, so we're always cautious as to putting something out there that's uh, very specific or that we're we can't exactly know how it's going to work itself out. So for that reason, uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to post the construction schedule. The intent was also to send notices out a week or two before we um, come to a, a location and work. So there should be notices sent one to a couple of weeks prior to construction at each location. Yeah, thank you for that input, Alex. Good point. Uh, I see Daniel mm -hmm. followed up uh, to say uh, we get, but we guessed on start and end times and runs. I uh, know uh, we we typically so we have a good idea of how long a project duration is. Of course, um, certain things come up in construction that can alter that, uh, but we we generally have a reasonable idea of how long a project will take. Uh, in this particular case, we've allocated six months for this project. Uh, the start times, of course, are dictated by multiple factors, including uh, some of what we touched on earlier, uh, having the necessary equipment in hand, making sure that the contractor and their subs will be available to complete the work within the allotted time frame. So based on that, that is how we were able to come up with that late May start date. Uh, of course, as you go through construction, there are various things that sometimes hinder uh, being able to do work in a particular location. As a result, the contractor may alter what he would have planned at that location and, and, and work in a different area. And so that's why when it gets to providing very specific information as to when we will be in certain areas, it's very challenging for us to do. But as Alex pointed out, there will be other notices that will be provided to help give some sort of uh, additional notice. Let's see, Marilyn said, thanks for shaving sh saving shade tree and maybe add some too. Um, thanks. Yeah, we um, in, a, in a few of the traffic circles where every place that we were able to, we we included a tree along with the other landscaping, um, cacti and other succulents, um, uh, smaller shrubs and, and things like that on ground covers. Um, and then in the chicanes as well, we'll, we'll, we'll have some some trees as well. Well, it looks like uh, no more questions seem to be coming through. Uh, we appreciate all of you for attending uh, this evening, and uh, we look forward to seeing a successful project through. We, of course, always ask, uh, as, as we know, construction can be inconvenient at times, but uh, just please consider the end result here and be patient with us as we uh, hopefully deliver a great project for the community. Thank you. Yes, thanks so much.
Thanks for the thumbs up, John.